going on people welcome to united view welcome to a full view with the we talk ayat podcast in the flesh in person here in Amsterdam. You don't get much better than this. No. Nope. It don't get much better than this. How you guys feeling? Yeah, we're feeling great after last night. We had a blast with you uh, at the stadium and in, in Amsterdam. Uh, fun time showing you guys around, uh, letting you view the game. And uh, I think you uh, guys thought it was uh, terrific, right? So, uh, I mean, very... That's an understatement. <laughs> understatement in the year. I'm, I'm going to say, um, what an experience, bro. Mm. And I, I, I learned a lot yesterday. I was gathering my thoughts today. Mm. I said, listen, you know the excitement. I'm just, I'm just excited because I can see what it could be. Mm. You know, before our players, you know, we got a couple of toxic ones in there. Before they don't want to do the tactics or play how this manager wants to play. I've seen it up in its pure form. So how he wants to play, what he wants to do. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes we say, you know, with the Ragnik thing, we've never seen what a Ragnik side looks like with our own eyes. So we don't know how far off our team is to what he really wanted to do. Mm. I know exactly what um, Ten Hag wants to do. Let's see if he can do it. Um, we, we, we are going to talk, obviously, Eric Ten Hag, but the beginning of this video, we've got to talk about another ex-player. I, I feel like every time we catch up with you guys, <laughs> it's, it's about taking something you've already had or how to get the best out of something you've already had. But that's part of the insight. Frankie De Jong, the latest reports, guys, um, are that a deal is, is not close, a deal is not imminent, however, confirmation it's has... happening no no <laughs> just just it's happening i got a feeling bro oh, no 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 feelings no feelings put all your it's money a... on it no, bro no 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 kids 13 to 16 <laughs> yeah the illegal age of gambling yeah see what i'm saying about Listen, this guy get your parents money go straight, nah, 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 straight nah. to the gambling shop pay it all i'm telling you big dividends let's go <laughs> nothing is confirmed um, but the reports are suggesting that Eric Ten Hag um, wants Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. There are contrasting reports and there's some reports saying that Frankie de Jong's upset, he still wants to stay, there's nothing in this. Other reports saying, no, Manchester United do like him, they do appreciate him. Eric Ten Hag has sounded him out, but a deal is not there. Let's talk about facts. And that is what type of player de Jong is and what type of player he could be under Ten Hag. I'll start with you, Ajax. Um, enlighten us, how, how could he be used at Manchester United? How impactful would he be under Eric Ten Hag? Yeah, first of all, uh, we talked about this in the last full few we were on, and I think he can be the resolution for your team because this guy is the best midfielder I've seen in, in decades at Ajax. He's is, he is definitely something else. And don't get too excited, KG. Okay. <laughs> I already see you smiling, man. What was I doing in the car on the way back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you this. No, but seriously, this guy, uh, the way he handles the ball and the way he distributes it uh, forward and his runs with the ball, he can excel accelerate within a run already you know he can just speed it up again the way he dances with the ball and can distribute it it's it's something else you should watch that uh, game in Bernabeu against Real Madrid where he left Modric and another player behind there are pictures of it it's, it's you you down, like dude. to watch compilations bro <laughs> Exactly, that, watch that, that compilation really what was that doing in the car just so yeah, the people know. that don't know you were watching a compilation <laughs> always <laughs> is that that's typical KG isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it is it is that is typical case. How you, I, in terms of what Ajax is saying then, we'll hear more from these guys in two seconds. Um, for you, Marcel, Frankie de Jong linked to Manchester United. Is it, is it, do you see this as, well, of course, we're getting Ten Hag. He used to play for Ten Hag, so it matches. Or do you, do you believe the things, the rumours that are there, that it actually is a lot more in this? Um, well, Ten Hag's already played. You know, I would use utilise de Jong. Mm. So I feel like that's an important factor. Um, Donny van der Beek's there. They grew up together in the, the youth system at Ajax. Never key point there. Um, it, it, the pieces of the puzzle fit together for me and um, I think he's one of the best in the world in terms of bringing the ball out of the defence. So um, I think there's a lot more to it in terms of how the system will work and how it will help the system and the whole team function. But um, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to it, man. I think it's good. Uh, let's talk about some of the prices, guys. Um, 60 million quoted, 60 million euros, 65 million pounds, et cetera, et cetera. Is that a bargain for a player of his quality or is that about right? Well, if you if you look at how he went to Barca, it was for more than that. Yeah, so you yeah. guys are getting a steal, I would say. But I'm still not convinced you guys can get him, to be honest, because Barca is one of his favorite teams. And um, <laughs> I did hear some rumors that he wasn't happy. Yes. But I do hear Xavi always saying, yeah, I love him. I want him to stay. Yeah. And we all know the financial situation with Barca, you know. So uh, every it, it could go your way just because <laughs> of that. 
Uh, but world-class player, I think he could be amazing. I think he's been misused at Barca because um, they play him more as an 8 or a 10. I see him more as a 6. Is that his best position for you? That's his best position. That's the position he played at Ajax. He's good at reading the game, interceptions, um, press resistant, um, very... Like you saw Timber yesterday, like comfortable oh, on the ball oh, when he's pressed and moving around. I don't think we're allowed to mention the Frankie T word around. <laughs> Frankie does it on a whole different level. So, yeah, I mean, I love the, um, the target I'm hearing from United because that sets the ambition for me. And, um, yeah, that's a high ambition if you go for Frankie. So uh, if that goes through, man, amazing sign. I mean, a lot of people are getting excited uh, about this. Uh, could he, you know, playing with the likes of Bruno Fernandes, um, we don't know who else we're going to get. Let's, let's assume <laughs> McTominay's still there and Fred and stuff like that. I, I get that and that might not be the thing that people want to hear, but let's just assume that that's right because we're only talking about Frankie Jong right now. Could he fit in to a Manchester United system now with the players that we've got if we just added him? Well, not particularly. I mean... Uh... Frankie Jong is more of a six, so he might play besides a player like Fred. It might it might work with, with uh, Bruno uh, in the ten position, mm. but I mean, if I look at Donny, if I look at Frankie and Bruno, those three together, that would be dream midfield. So that can work then. Donny that could work. That but, but could work is, for sure. Still miss a, a bench, I would say. So yeah, look, if yeah, one I, of those get injured, who do you have? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that as well. No, no, not for sure. But I'm talking about the starting line. Yeah, yeah. Look at starting so Donny. Bruno and, uh, Frankie. and Frankie. Frankie, Frankie, Frankie builds up the play. I mean, he helps out the defense. He helps out the 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 the, 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 the attackers. I mean, as as uh, both Ajax and Papimento said, he can distribute the ball. He dances with the ball, comfort comfortable on the ball. He he, he brings rest mm. in, in in midfield. Like a calmness. Calmness, indeed. Donny, who can run. He ha he has three lungs. He can run. <laughs> A uh, forward, backwards, and, and and Bruno. I mean, he's more of an assist guy. Mm. Works hard. I mean, it's 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 the perfect chemistry. Marcel, does that? And I'll ask you in a sec, KG. Does that fill you with optimism here in Donny, Bruno, and Frankie Dion? Do you think that's something that can work in the Premier League? Um, not a traditional kind of English mentality. You know, free, fluid footballers, clever footballers. I still feel like we were speaking about it before, um, an enforcer type might be needed mm. or necessary in the Premier League. You know, Bruno's not very physical. Donny, we've seen, you know, struggled a little bit in terms of the physical side. Um, but in terms of creativity and balance, Klassen's a very clever player that we saw yesterday and is very smart with his movements. Donny's got that similar type of instinct and understanding of the game. It looks interesting in there. I would just say, does Donny is, is not sorry, is De Jong a captain? Because we really, we really looking like a captain. No. We're looking for a captain. Is he a captain type? That's the question. No, no. That's the question. He's not. He's not really a captain type. He is more of assisting the captain, but he's not a leader in terms of gaining that respect as a type player as Ronaldo does. So, no, he's not. He he can help out. But not a typical leader or captain that you that United seeks as well. No. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Go you know what? It's the most important thing, uh, Flex, that you have to uh, take into consideration with the young. Like we talked about this before in several episodes on on your channel. The problem with your uh, current squad is that you are not comfortable on the ball. So starting with with Frankie as the first pivot in front of your defense, he can distribute the ball naturally. So That's if you have like defenders behind them that lack the quality to distribute the ball. The first thing they have to do is give the ball to, to uh, Frankie and he will take care of the rest because he's rarely losing the ball. He always finds a solution, either by dancing away, accelerating or, 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 or dribbling with the ball forward or with great passes that he distributes it uh, like progressive passing. And this is the thing you're missing now in your midfield, especially with Fred and McTominay this season. And with, yeah, with all due respect, uh, a lot of crappy defenders behind them that cannot distribute the ball. This is the biggest problem at United. So if you can secure him as a signing, he will be the, 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 the play that you can build around and then fill in the missing pieces. And with also Donny van der Beek, you have a pivotal player also who played in the midfield of Ten Hag already in, in, our, in our great run in, in 1819. Yeah. Oh. So you have two 
great players that know the system, that can distribute the ball. And a good thing about the combination of those two is Donny is also very good off the ball. Frankie is also very good on the ball. So Donny knows how to run and make room. Frankie knows how to make use of it. So the combination of those two is like, yeah, amazing. I do not want to make, uh, yo, yo, KG, I do not want to make you that happy again. But if you ma uh, manage to secure those guys, it will be yeah, great for your yeah. system. And I, I just want to say one more thing, because I remember you said, Juan said, like, some players will exceed yes. your expectations. Yes, did say that. Yeah. That and a lot of people eyebrows there. saying, you can't get anything out of Mc, uh, McTominay, you can't get anything out of... Um, I forgot, I haven't got a mic. <laughs> 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 well, I forgot, I forgot, sorry. And now I forgot. I knew this like this. You know what I did? Frankie. No, Frankie. I was Frankie. Bro, I could just see them two passing to each other. I was just sitting there like that, bro. He were not even going to ask I'm anything. Like a woman that smoke, you know the smoke in me when she smoked me after a long day at work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was, I was just before you carry on, I was saying that a lot of people raised their eyebrows at that time when one said that. But I remember leaving that conversation and I thought about it all night and I was like, wow, what? Could that happen? Because we've written off so many and we're within our rights to write off so many with what we've seen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was just an interesting point. Exactly. And um, I just think Frankie de Jong will make other players play better around him. And I think it's also good for Ten Hag to have a Donny van der Beek and Frankie de Jong. They might not be the leaders, but they might be the guys that can answer the questions of the players that are not used to this system. And that's something that can help Ten Hag a lot, especially in a club that everybody's trying to snitch on each other yeah he's trying to fight <laughs> so maybe this will bring some unity and backup for you uh, for ten Hag, uh building this team they will lead by example exactly i was gonna ask that um because you guys said that after the sh after we finished that amazing full view that we did that other time yeah they said it was a bit too positive and you guys we, got we, some we was, no you guys got oh. a bit too i got a little bit a lot of feedback saying we didn't say the negatives of ten um of ten Hag. so can you like share any of the negatives you say that that he, he might have? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean there are some some things that he definitely needs to improve, um, especially this season where uh, Ten Hag never has a plan B. He never had a plan B, and it had a reason because plan A always worked. <laughs> we play, we play. <laughs> yeah, he got back in again. No, but. I mean, we were we played the best football. We always win. We you didn't concede a goal uh, for so. I mean, we have the less conceded goals. First we half had, of the season. First yeah. half of season. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to say. First half of season. Second half of season. Yeah, we were a bit bad. We had a lot of injuries uh, and so on, and the chemistry was a bit gone. And that was the moment where Ten Hag had to do some changes, which he hasn't done, and that was worse. I mean, a lot of fans were like complaining because uh, a player like Haller, who was playing totally bad, didn't get substituted or played every game. Uh, Broby didn't get any minutes. Um, Kudus didn't get any Kudus, minutes. Kudus, one of our talents, didn't get any minutes. So that was one thing which, which, which was worrisome. Second thing is the substitutions. He didn't substitute a lot of players. Players on the bench who, has, who have quality, they... Kept on the bench. They were kept on the bench, even though the game asked for new players. So that, 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 that was a bad thing. Although we did see in the last couple of games that he changed a lot. Yeah. So that, that, that could be seen as improving. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I have to finish it. Yeah, no, I just want to say, look, it, it's not, he didn't do everything perfect. Like for instance, uh, Martinez is uh, one of the best uh, left central uh, backs we have. He's, uh, sorry, uh, but he actually got voted player of the year. Bro, right? yeah, yeah, but this is also the yeah. guy that Ten Hag put yeah. six months on the bench and didn't give him any chances. So um, he still ended up playing with this. Yeah. Uh, he no, fought his way. Oh, season before, oh, 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 but he, oh. he still uh, oh, okay. brought him back. But that's yeah. mostly because Lichia did so well when he got a chance. But it took him a while to get that chance. And uh, also with Nico Diafico yesterday, that's oh, all the yeah, first goal. They love, yeah. they love him. He's been on the bench. He's not been playing because of Blint. Blint, and even if Blint plays bad, he's still on the bench. He's not getting enough minutes. So uh, yeah. he, he has a tendency to go a little bit for favorites and uh, who he gives the trust to to uh, play as much as possible. Um, but it's always, yeah, I mean, those are the little things I would say Ten Hag 
Ten, so ten is, is it rotation then? I, is it yeah. basically you're saying rotation? He doesn't have the ability that, maybe to rotate that is enough. The, that is the problem, you know. And and I have to add some uh, little things still to to uh, to the list. Uh, we talked about it before about lack of a plan B, a lack of uh, substituting in time, but also the rotation thing that Marcel is mentioning. This is a big problem because he's sticking to his first eleven, maybe supping one or two players of it, but the other players need match rhythm. So at the end of the season, like this season, we see we get some injuries, we get some players that are fatigued, that uh, the, 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 the form drops a bit. Mm-hmm. And the other players that he plays now, he didn't give them enough minutes and match rhythm when it was possible. So people are saying, yeah, you see, he's right, those players are crap. It's not how it works, you know. You need to give, structurally, you need to give players minutes so that they can cope with the system, blend in with the team, and they can replace the player when necessary. And this is the stubbornness Ten Hag a little bit has. He sticks to his plan, and a lot of great persons, people in the world, they have like their own opinion, right? And they stick to it. Ten Hag is a little bit like this also when he is wrong. He tends to stick with his plan a little bit too long, and it, it takes a little bit of time to, to, to change his view and his tactics. And a good coach, in my opinion, will earlier see the problem and also has the ability to change it within a match, or, or if he sees a problem, he can turn it around in a week or with a little bit of training. And this is something that Hach needs to work on because it takes a little bit longer with him because he's pretty stubborn, in my opinion. Can I, can yes. I yeah. just- Look, we're being maybe a little too critical, yeah. but there are some things that he did great. Tadic to the nine oh. position, false nine. Yeah. Uh, Alvarez was being booed yeah. by supporters, and yeah. he still played them, and he changed the whole tactics just to suit Alvarez's style of play. Um, so, um, and then it became much better. So he does have the tactical knowledge, but I just think in the Premier League you have thirty, <laughs> you have thirty-eight you games. You got a couple live ones. <laughs> you got a couple live ones. <laughs> 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 exactly, but no, but in the Premier League, you have 38 games, you have a League Cup, you have yes. an FA Cup, you have European uh, uh, games. So his uh, rotation must be much better. Yeah. And um, it's not only 12 men, no, it's now 15, 16 men. You have to start rotating. But this seems like something that, um, I mean, look, every, every manager comes with their criticisms, right? Every manager yeah. comes with their flaws, even the no, greatest. Like, no, no one's perfect. But these all seems like, seem like things that in the evolution of Ten Hag, which let's not forget, this is the next step of his evolution. This yeah. is, and that's with the most respect to Ajax, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he's going to the next stage of his career. Yeah. This is something that maybe he's questioning himself about and saying, I'm, I'm going to Manchester United. Manchester United is broken. It, the scrutiny is a lot higher. Um, the, 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 the stakes of his reputation at this moment now are coming into real question, going into the Premier League with all the things that you said. So are these things that maybe okay, they're negatives from what you guys have seen, but what my question is to you is, do you feel that it's something that he can actually address because he's going into that next stage of his evolution? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we need to take into account that, uh, with all due respect, it can't get any lower at United. So, so, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, he's not lying. Yeah. He's fans, not lying. fans are saying like, uh, what's Tenar doing? Uh, he's going to a, a rec club, etc. Yeah. But I think it's an excellent move. It's a magical move because he can't do any less. That's what we thought from Ronald Koeman as well, going to Barca. And we saw yeah, that. ah, well, well, yes, I mean, if Messi is gone, you, you know, you know, it, it will get, it will get right better. But, <laughs> no, but I mean, if he, if he gets those players that he wants, if he gets the time, he can, he can, he can, he can do it. He can do it. You can definitely do it. One of the things that I saw um, yesterday was the respect. So that, you know, sometimes you have to look at how players revere a manager, right? And unfortunately, our players, I don't know why they couldn't respect Ralph. Maybe they just said, you haven't done, no, but maybe they just said, you haven't done enough in the game, right? So they just looked at him and thought, no, you build clubs, you're not a manager. This man, he, one, I think they're going to enjoy training. They're going to go to training because teams want, you want to move, you want to be able to bop the ball. You want to play beautiful football. These guys are going to get to do that. But it was at the end of the game, they were all in a line and just clapping the manager, all the Ajax players. And I said, that must mean something because if he calls, because even let's say he has his own team, but other visiting teams can see that's a good manager. So if he's calling any player in the Dutch league, they played against Ajax before, they'll answer the phone. If we only calls, they can answer the like even the, the whole the, the point that we're linked to Frankie Dion, 
he knows the position we're in, no Champions League, but he's like, I trust the manager. The pulling power could be... The pulling power. We great. finally have a manager with yeah. pulling power, you know, where it's like, I might answer the phone call to him because he might have an idea. So even... I, I'm actually looking forward to the conversation with um, Ronaldo and our new manager just to see if he can kind of convince... I still think it's incredibly difficult to get Ronaldo to stay. Honestly, I think summer's going to mid... In the midway in summer... Ronaldo's just going to say yeah. it's, it's, it's long. But, but you know what it is, uh, KG? It's going to be a culture shock for a lot of players at your club because you, you, you just told about uh, they will enjoy training again. Mm -hmm. Ten Hag is known for his training regime, especially in the beginning yeah. of a new club. So he's going to train them hard. And there, from your guys, what you're saying, there are a lot of drama queens at your club, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they need to like step it up and train hard because he's not allowing players to slack off. So the real drama queens and the players that are not putting in the effort, they will drop. Because the first six months or something, he's going to drill them and he's going to put in the effort and the hours on the field on the training pitch. And it's necessary also because the style we play at Ajax, you need to have a great energy and condition for it. Because actually our opponents, usually if it's a hard match, they stick to, until the 17th minute and then they drop because they're exhausted. And the team that Ten Hag is playing, the players he's playing, they need to outlast them energy-wise and, and condition-wise. So they need to train hard for this. So I think... It will be a culture shock at first, and the players that are not up to it, they are going to drop. You they can you can like see it. the rotten apples will will disappear. They won't like it in this. Yeah, I must uh, I must agree though with KG. Mm -hmm. If you're playing attacking football and you're seeing that your team is doing much better, you go with uh, excitement to your training instead of being trashed every week mm -hmm. and nobody doing their work. And yeah, the training will not be the same. So I think they will go. Yeah, they will be much happier um, with Tenag. Yeah. Definitely. So with Ten Hag quickly, um, I saw in the game yesterday, Halle was up front and then he changed it to the to the younger forward, Robbie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is a target man a key feature of his teams? Yeah. Because they were both playing back to goal. They were both doing hold up play. But at the same time, it yeah. was a fluid front no. three. No. So there was times where plays were interchanging. Tadic went into the centre and played a bit of a false night or he went out wide. There's a lot of interchanging. Is that a regular feature of his team? You want this? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's difficult because uh, there are two answers to this question. Because we played two different kind of styles in, in different years. If you look back at the 18-19 run with the Champions League, we played with a false nine. Yeah. We played with Tadic at the striker position, but he actually dropped back yeah. to distribute the ball and to, 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 to hold the ball and distribute it to the players that pass him. And this year, we play a lot more with a target man. Haller is like, we call him the tapping king. He, he made a lot of goals uh, being at the... You have to be, you have to be at the spot, you know. You have to be at the right position. But he is like the end of the distribution, you know. All the, all the uh, crosses go to him and assists from Anthony and stuff go to him. So it's a different kind of style. And uh, Ten Hag implemented both styles. In 1890, we were very successful with Tadic in the Champions League with the, the false nine uh, variation. False. Yeah, and, and now this year we play with a pure target man with, with, with Haller, uh, aside from the experimenting that he is doing at the end of the season, don't know why, but the uh, normal matches he's playing in uh, up front. Yeah, I, I just want to say that Haller, I don't see him as a, a real target man. No. Like, um, he, he's more of a finisher, I would say. Like, um, um, in the box, uh, the last guy touch the ball and, and score. I would say Broby is more of a target man because he knows how to hold the ball, better link-up play, um, and he doesn't lose the ball as often as, as Haller. That's why I don't what see him. What is your definition of a target man? Because you can do it uh, uh, both ways. You know, a target man can for be me, the last person that, 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 that just finishes. For me, that's more of a finisher in the box that gets the ball in the box. For me, a target man is somebody that also works in the link-up play, uh, building up towards that goal. And um, I saw Zlatan doing that a lot. Ibrahimovic, he's master in just holding the ball around him, not getting touched. Haller doesn't have that. So that's why I don't really see him as a target. Because I see it as a pure finisher. Okay, okay so my, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about our goalkeeper, David De Gea. Yesterday I was watching your goalkeeper and he Did wasn't... You say his name? What is his name? Stecklenberg. <laughs> well done, well done. Well, 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 <laughs> I, I just tried to drill you out. You came. Yeah, I'm training. here. He's ready. I'm here. No, but I was watching. I watched. I watched your goalkeeper yesterday, right? And there, you know, everyone talks about distribution. There was not a lot of times that he was pressed, so he could just hear anywhere. He, and the times that he was pressed, that's when the kicking was somewhat off. I know in the Premier League, De Gea has never allowed any, and the passes that come to De Gea 
for the kick in is not there. So it's like the the question is, do you think De Gea is good enough? Because I I don't I don't believe there's a press here. Look at the times we were looking at the goalkeeper. He is like he could hear anywhere. Herod didn't. Her, no, there's nothing but coming. You know, you know what the problem is. Uh, you know what the problem is, uh, uh, KG. The reason why they are not pressing is because we have a, a standard within our uh, in our league. You know, they know we can like uh, pass the uh, ball around at the back, and they just do not try to to catch the ball anymore because we outplay them. And at United, mm -hmm. they know there's something to be. One. One there, you know, because yeah. the, the distribution in the back is not, not that great. So the standard that you play in your own league sets also the way the, the opposition tries to get the ball from you. Yeah, it's, all about, it's all about the center backs, the center backs of the United. I mean, you don't have any footballers in the center. So th there's no trust from, from the back like we have with, 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 with Blind, what we have with Timber, uh, what we have with Stegelburg. I mean, we have Mazraoui, they're all footballers. So uh, the attackers of our opponent, they already know if they want to press, they will lose. They will lose the, uh, they won't gain the ball. It's a bit different at United with, 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 with defenders who can't build up. They're not footballers. Yeah, yeah. They're technically not that very gifted. Yeah. So you need to build around that. You need yeah. to have some certain players to, uh, to, to, to do the same as what uh, Ajax does. Right. Yeah, and I just want to say this. You saw Stakenberg yesterday, yeah. two men pressing, zonal, not yeah. fully going forward. But still, he gives it between the line to the midfielder. The midfielder yeah. turns away and opens yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, the field. So, um, yeah, I think De Gea can do it. Yeah. But I just don't think he trusts Maguire to do it right, Juan Bissaka yeah. to do it right, or uh, Fred to do it right, or McTominay to do it right. So, yeah, I think that's the reason he always goes yeah. and, and, and shoots the ball high or a long ball, you know? Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to wrap up there, but just on that, on that last point, I actually think that's a massive point because basically what the guys are saying is that we need to start changing the profile of how we play so that other teams approach us in a it's different manner. Yeah. Because actually, if you think of how we play now, like they're saying, teams know it's easy to get after Man United, you yeah. get the ball back. Press the hair, you get the ball back. Yeah. But then again, that's where Ten Hag's going to come into his element with a mixture of what players he brings in to help facilitate that, i.e. Yeah. bringing sure. Donny back in and De Jong, versus also the instruction that we have. De Gea, when you have it, Harry, you're going to go here. Then um, Rashford, you're going to come to feet. But then also, Bruno, you're going to come in here and create this so then we can play out or whatever. Yeah. This is a mixture of both. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. a really, really... Can I say the one thing that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing I really want to say. Um, the one thing... There's two things, actually. Um, the, the ability to rebuild yes. is incredible. This guy's been rebuilding. He loses big players. It's really unlikely you're going to lose players at Man United unless we just wanted to sell them. Yeah. So All these true. players, these are going to be his players. They're not going to go to another big club. They're going to be here unless as a breakdown in relationship, right? That's I think that's a major positive yeah. in yeah. Um, in this manager. I think that's like, wow, we, we finally get that. The next thing as well is like, I just, we're going to enjoy football next season. We are going to enjoy it. Flex, we're going to enjoy football. We should enjoy it. I want to please, see please, first. Please say it one more time. But KG, KG, if it's not all about the score and you no, like we enjoy good football, football. That's then what I'm yeah, saying. you we're will gonna, see I'm just yeah, saying definitely. we're just going to enjoy... We're going to see a team that's trying to is play it, football. Is it, is it that, that there? Because is it, is, it is it about enjoying the process? Because I, I still... Yeah, the, okay, fair enough. Because I... Look at the times we was... Me and you, how many times did we get up yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like we was doing... It's like it's, was working but on that's, a, but, we've, but we're watching the finished article right at its end. Just basically, yeah, you know what I mean? But every, every moment, usually we know we got where our traffic Yeah, because look, yeah. because we're in the mud. Was like this flex, every day? Yeah. flex. <laughs> we suffocated the opponent. Yes. We didn't give yeah. them any time Nothing. to think. From minute one. Uh, uh, yeah, um, leave no doubt, I would say. So yeah. that's what we did yesterday. And uh, that's how United should always play. Absolutely. Nobody yeah, should get win. my points I'm here. Win. Yeah, I think that process to get in there is what I think you're trying to say. That process for us to get yeah. there is going to be the little turbulence. It's going to be painful, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe that it's when Ten Hag... Look, Ralph Ranick, again, I know the thing about you're good for building, not managing, etc, etc. He tried to get these players to do something drastically different at a very, very crazy time. Mm -hmm. Manic time, middle of the season, game after game. It was difficult. Four triple two. Three games, he went, Jesus Christ, 
No, here's your four two three one. Yeah. I'll, I'll work with that. But obviously, I know this is a different uh, a different situation with a lot more time now. But I still feel trying to get these players to do something completely different in the early months. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a tough watch yeah. at times, and we will lose games where we concede we goals. We will transition. Uh, there was a try. fan. Oh, and I understand, but we play. but we will have the patience to say at least he's trying. Yeah. And lastly, before you finish off, yeah. um, there was a fan yesterday who said to me, um, in the first sort of, I think he said four months. No, the first year, he said, it wasn't very good. And we were all saying, effing, bald head, ten hog. He's not very good and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, six months, six months, yeah. See, so in there, you have to accept that, that, that maybe that graceful year of, whoa, it we did finish fifth. Yeah. It was six months. Six months, though. Six months, yeah, six, six months. months. And then next year we were in the um, against Spurs in the Champions League. Uh, we lost that it's game. Worth so, it. It's worth so, it. so, so you know, <laughs> happy event. No, but, yeah, but I mean, yes. But seriously, like, yeah, yeah. You know what? What's the most important thing here is like um, Ranjek is going to be a pivotal for you guys next season. And why? This guy was at the helm of your team for six months. The information he gathered of the players of the team of yeah. the rotten apples within the team, he can all distribute it to Ten Hag from an, a higher position. Ten Hag, listen. The management. I think so because he would be stupid if he would not listen to him because he knows everything now. Because they think that that's stupid place, you know. They think, you know, he's only here for six months, we're not going to listen to him. But he knows he everything about them now. He's snitching. So <laughs> he's going to tell this to the manager. And also, what you're saying, you're making a great point, uh, KG. You have to change your style. And uh, when your style is changed at the club, you guys can actually build upon it. We have to rebuild ourselves and reinvent ourselves time after time after time. If you get the right players and you get uh, the players to change a different style, like Pep is, uh, for example, playing at City, you can build upon it because the players will stay at your club because mm -hmm. the stature of your club is big and they are in the biggest competition in the world. And this is a huge difference with, with our club. They are leaving us for other teams because they want to try it in different competitions. Mm -hmm. So I'm convinced that if he manages to change the, the, the style of play and attract the right amount of players and the right players will stay in combination with the information of Ranjik, you will have a, a, a huge a different situation in a few years and you can build upon it. Good times are coming then. Guys, um, there you have it. Full view in person. So, so informative. We've covered Frankie De Jong. Um, if you're just as a summary, if you're just joining us, Manchester United are definitely interested in signing Frankie De Jong from Barcelona. Eric Ten Hag has, has said, yes, that is the player that I want. However, there is no deal close. We've discussed the impact that uh, Frankie De Jong could have on this Manchester United side. We've also talked about the patience needed and what the football can look like under Eric Ten Hag. I just want to thank you guys. You guys have been like, can we give him a little? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Josh like Kappen behind that. Behind like, that. it's been, it's, thank it's you been guys. incredible. And do you know what? Oh, no, no worries. And and everyone at home who who have who has dropped comments about the 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 content and stuff like that and had opinions on the content. It just shows you you can't beat being there. Um, and the fact that the, the channel was able to to cover the Youth Cup final yesterday, we was able to cover this in a whole other country. It just shows why would we not use our resources to bring the best content we can possibly yeah. to Manchester United fans across the world. Yeah. And even Ajax fans who have now joined the family of the United View. I've seen and, them in the comments saying they will no, wish us no. well. So, um, it's, great stuff. It's a, a self-act. Well, act. Yeah, 100%. One last, uh, one last thing, Flex. You know, we are going to keep an eye on our boys Ten Hag and yes. Tony. So He'll be maybe coming for next, us if we ruin maybe, it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the next episode will be us coming to Manchester okay. watching a game with you guys yeah. next Ten yeah. Hag, watch. Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments if you guys want, if you want to see the guys from We Talk Ajax come over and see Ten Hag um, struggling in his first few games um, <laughs> <laughs> and saying, "Well, what is this?" Um, let us know. But no, thank you guys. It's been incredible. We're going to keep striving to give you guys the best content from all over and going the extra mile, not just sitting on our asses and hoping it gets done don't talk about it be about it we are out of here guys peace, peace. peace.